Stuart Varney of Fox Business Network weighed in on the state of the Democratic primary, and he gave us quite a laugh. In the last five months, Joe Biden's standing in the polls has gone south. I'm using the respected Monmouth poll. 32% support in June, 23% support in November. Now, not good. And getting worse by the day, Joe is easily rattled. Watch this. That over those eight years, there were three million people that were deported and separated from their families. Yeah. Well, you should vote for Trump. You should vote for Trump. All right, well, that's not a great response. Now, here is Easily Rattled, part two. Roll it. Mr. Vice President, I'm wondering if you have a comment on this report and court filing out of Arkansas that your son, Hunter, just made you a uh, grandfather again. No, that's a private matter. I have no comment. Thank you, guys. 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 Thank you, Take a hard look at political reality. Bloomberg does not have a money problem. He could chuck a billion or two and barely blink. Chuck it into the election campaign, barely blink. And money talks in politics, like it or not. He doesn't scare the moderate Democrat base, doesn't scare him. He's not going to throw the country into recession with some wild climate experiment. This, I'm talking about Bloomberg now. And he has solid executive experience as the mayor of New York. I'm not saying he wins the presidency, but he's got a good shot at being the Democrats nominee. The Democrat presidential race right now is chaotic. What, 18 candidates? A fading Joe Biden, unelectable socialists, Warren and Sanders, extreme policy divisions, and here comes the $52 billion man. Wouldn't that be something? Trump versus Bloomberg in 2020? Now that would be the election of the century. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> it wouldn't even be close to that. It would be two oligarch billionaires going at it. And by the way, Trump would obliterate Mike Bloomberg. I have no doubt about that. Okay. This is a guy who does economic and political commentary on a regular basis. Stuart Varney. And he's saying Mike Bloomberg is a serious candidate. Based on what? <laughs> Based on what? You know, a poll just came out. They asked Democratic voters, should, should he even run? Like, that was the question. Not, do you support him? The question was, should he even run? Only 19% said yes. Only 19%. That's not even, do you support him? That's, should he run? Only 19% said yes. So you know what he's trying to do, right? By the way, he's skipping the first four contests. What? I, in all seriousness, I think that's disrespectful to the people in Iowa and New Hampshire. I think it is. So he's jumping in on Super Tuesday. But he's skipping the first few contests. Why? Uh, he's, he's a little late to the scene, and he knows he's, he would tank there anyway, so he's not even going to try to get the votes of the people in that region. W way to show you really believe in democracy and think everybody should have a voice there, Mike Bloomberg. <laughs> so he's skipping the first four contest, contests, jumping in on Super Tuesday, and he just did, the other day, the biggest ad buy ever. The former record was from Barack Obama, $24 million at once in an ad buy. I think it was for the 2012 election. Bloomberg did $30 million. Now, that's all his own money. And he said, and he made a big deal of it, oh, I'm not going to raise any money uh, from anybody. I'm, I'm going to self-finance my entire campaign. Mike, nobody was offering to give you money. <laughs> not a single person was like, Muff. Have my money, Mike Bloomberg. <laughs> Nobody said that. So when he says, I'll self-finance it. Yeah, of course you're going to self-finance it because you got $52 billion. If you waste a billion dollars, you don't. it's nothing to you. So you're going to self-finance it and you're trying to buy the election. The only reason you're taken seriously is because you're a billionaire. Which, you know, gets to the point of Stuart Varney here. I need you guys to understand something. Part of being a billionaire, and Mike Bloomberg writes a lot of checks to a lot of issues, part of that is extreme power. So how can all these so-called journalists and reporters at all the main networks, how can they call him out? How can they be aggressive against him when they know he's a potential future employer? You all know Bloomberg News is a thing. They have their own channel. They have their own outlet, print outlet. He's the owner of that. So are they more likely or less likely to call him out in vociferous terms, knowing that he's a potential future employer 
answer, of course they're less likely to call him out. Of course they are. Uh, there's a lot of people, like, Mike Bloomberg single-handedly funds a lot of um, movement groups in this country. So, on gun reform, for example. Now, I happen to agree with him on the issue of gun reform, but I have a principled position against money in politics, so I don't want to win on that issue because we have a bigger checkbook than the other side. I want to win on that issue because we convince people through debate and discourse that, like, we actually have the open discussion, and we come to the conclusion, hey, it's a good idea to do universal background checks and a couple other, uh, you know, regulatory motions here. No, he he uh, finances some of the biggest gun reform groups. So what position are they in now? Now, a lot of the other Democratic candidates have the same positions as Bloomberg on gun reform. But these groups, there's a conflict of interest. They're more likely to say, uh, I support Bloomberg because he's paying their, he's paying them. So he's, he is effectively trying to buy legitimacy. That's what he's doing here. And what a terrible system we have where you could just have a billionaire willy-nilly hop in and think he's the savior. By the way, I read a great article in The Atlantic earlier today, and it is devastating about the kind of ideology Mike Bloomberg has. I believe they called in the article paternalistic and coercive. That's exactly right. And authoritarian. Did you know that as mayor of New York... He banned um, the feeding of homeless people, the donating of food to homeless shelters, the donating of bagels in particular to homeless shelters. Why? They said, oh, we, we don't have uh, the bureaucracy at the moment to test the salt level and, and the carbohydrate level of the bagels and everything. So we're just going to do a blanket ban of donating bagels from bagel stores to homeless shelters. Like at the end of the day, you know, you'll have, they donate the remainder. Bagels might be a little hard or whatever, but still, they're donate free bagels to a homeless shelter. He banned that. He said, no, you can't do that. This is, that's who Mike Bloomberg is, man. The dude, the probably the number one thing he was known for as uh, mayor of New York is banning of the Big Gulp. He banned Big Gulps. Why? I don't think you should have that. That's a lot of soda. I'm against you having that much soda, so now I'm going to use the force of law to try to stop you from doing that. Who are you? <laughs> like, who are you? That's a, even like if your mom or dad tells you don't drink that. At a certain age, you have the right to be like, how about you piss off? I'll do what I want. <laughs> but he's a representative of the government, and he's going to tell you, don't do that. I don't like that. Stop that. What are you doing? Stop and frisk. Against the Fourth Amendment. Illegal, unconstitutional. Defended it his entire time in office. Perpetrated it his entire time in office. 99% of the time yields nothing, and takes away the rights of black and brown people for the most overwhelmingly in the city. And he has the nerve now to pretend, like, oh, I'm sorry. You're only doing that because you want to be president. That's so obvious. You don't, like, you still believe in it. Of course you still believe in it. That's why you defended it your entire time in office. He's against an increase in the minimum wage. <laughs> the dude is running in a Democratic primary. He's not a Democrat. He used to be a Republican, then he became an Independent. Like, seven and a half minutes ago, he became a Democrat. And he's just trying to buy his way in. And... Instead of Stuart Varney saying, hey man, you're wildly out of lockstep with the Democratic base. What are you even doing? Look at the numbers of what the, uh, what the Democratic base believes. You're against everything that they're for. Instead of doing that, what does he do? Oh, very serious candidate. Falling Biden. Bloomberg will come in and save the day. This is a political commentator. Stuart Varney gets paid millions of dollars every year. This is his contribution. This is his uh, political commentary. Now, my guess is, I'm not sure he even believes what he's saying. That, oh yeah, Bloomberg's a real threat. Based on what? There's no reason to believe that, other than that he's a billionaire. Um, but I think part of what's flavoring his commentary here is, he knows that he's a potential future employer. That's what I think. So say a couple kind words about Bloomberg, and then when the time comes, hey, maybe... Maybe he hooks you up. And that's the problem. The same people who are going to, who scream all the time, oh my God, Donald Trump says fake news. Oh my God, we need to care about the First Amendment and a free press. They didn't bat an eyelash when a billionaire who owns a multi million, maybe multi billion dollar media company hops into the race and, um, and says, oh, they're, they're not going to cover me. They're not going to cover anybody else in the race. So you're stopping an investigative news outlet from doing investigative reporting because you're running for office. 
Nobody even batted an eyelash. Nobody even was like, oh, that's a problem. Nope. Everybody in mainstream media is like, oh, it's totally cool. You want to talk about state media. Imagine in the inconceivable scenario of Bloomberg wins. What happens to Bloomberg News then? Does it just continue existing? And you have a literal, like, state media outlet? <laughs> Unitary executive media outlet? Presidential media outlet? Unbelievably gross. And, uh, of course, Fox is going to take him seriously.